This is... Print or Pass! Welcome to Printer Pass, a review show where we take a look at 3D printer filaments and accessories, run them through a series of tests to see whether you should print it or pass on them. Today we're taking a look at PK's PLA. I think I'm saying that correctly, but oh well. You can find it on Amazon.com for $24.99, and currently it's on sale for $13.99. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link down in the description if you want to support the channel. P-Case is keeping it simple, only including the roll of filament in the box, and it is on a plastic spool, which is refreshing. P-Case recommends that you print this PLA at 190 to 210 degrees Celsius at the hot end, and a bed temp between zero and 60 degrees Celsius. Two initial thoughts before I load this up. One, the blue is extremely vibrant. It looks really good. But secondly, looking at the filament on the spool, it looks very haphazard, and I'm wondering if I'm going to run into jamming issues in the AMS due to tangles. For our benchmark prints, I used three different models, an XYZ calibration cube, a 3D Benchy, and an all-in-one mini 3D printer test. All the links to these models will be in the description of the video. XYZ cube came out pretty good. Nothing to complain about here. Benchy looks very good as well. Circles are well defined here. No stringing. Looks very good. Looking at the all-in-one test, we can see it got all the way to an 80 degree overhang with no problem. Few hiccups on 80 degrees, 70 degrees came out pretty darn good. Flip it to the top here, the bridging test. It was able to bridge 25 millimeters with no problem. And then the stringing test came out awesome. Literally zero stringing. Overall impressions of the benchmarks is I'm very impressed. I was a little concerned when I saw the strands of filament overlapping when I opened the spool, but the AMS didn't have any hiccups when printing this, and the prints came out very nice. I love the shine to the filament. For every print or pass strength and flexibility testing, I use the same exact models and infill settings for my slicer. The only thing I change is the filament specific settings. For strength, I use these hooks that I designed that go over the I-beam in my basement and they allow me to hang weights from them to test the strength of the filament. For flexibility, I use this ruler shaped print that I clamp down in my desk and pull it down until it breaks to test how much flex I can get out of this filament. We got the empty bucket hung up. Let's start adding some weight. Five pounds. 10 pounds. Still fine. I'm going to pull these out. This is a 20 pound weight. Twenty five pounds. This seems to be pretty on par with the other decent PLA I tested. This is the mystery round where we spin the wheel to find a model that we want to print out with our new filament. If you liked the video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. Also leave down in the comments below a model that you want to put on the wheel and I'll print out a new wedge to put in the wheel for the next episode. Well, four and a half hours later, we have a beautiful 3D printing classic, a good old Roctopus. This thing came out beautifully, and I am super happy with this filament. So, PK's PLA, my overall impressions, I'm very surprised. I saw this on Amazon for $14, and I was like, why not? It's pretty cheap. Let's give it a shot. I've never heard of PK's before. I wasn't expecting much, but looking at the benchmark prints and the Roctopus, I mean, the quality is really good. It has a great finish to it, and I really like the color. 
The strength and flexibility test proves that it's just as strong and flexible as other PLA. So for this episode, PK's PLA, that's going to be a pass. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.